Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in Brunei. This episode, we're gonna continue building the 737 motorized throttle unit. Now it is a prototype, hence it's why it's all in different colors. I am printing this as fast as physically possible. And since the last episode, it's taken four days to get the rest of the parts all printed for the right hand side. First thing I need to do is wire up some of the switches this will allow me to do some prototyping later on, after I put the cover on. Soldering iron's heating up. Let's connect some wires. Got some aircraft wire here, left over from a previous mod. So I'm going to shove it in the vise, just to make it easier to pre-tin the wires. So these three here that I've got prepped will be for the start micro switch. Guys, this is really starting to look like a good bit of kit. You are going to have to excuse all the different colours, that's because I have seriously have used a lot of PLA. I'm now trying to save the grey and the black for the final prints and using all the other colours now just for prototyping purposes, knowing full well that I'm going to have to print these out several times. And I think that's as far as we can go on the left hand side. Now we need to finish it off with the right hand side starting with the throttle. Now I'm not going to build the throttle completely, I'm not going to build all the mechanism inside because I already know there's quite a few changes I want to make to these units. That's the right hand side throttle nearly complete now. You can see that I've missed out the, the working mechanism of the stem because I know I'm going to change that later on. I've also made the drive motor gear a lot longer so it's got more engagement. Flipping it over to the side, we've got the flaps lever. That works, as you can see. I've forgotten to print the drive gear for the hall sensor, but that's not gonna stop us from progressing. What we need to do now is marry up this side with the main unit and see how it all fits and how it works. This is getting exceptionally heavy right now as well. Oh, 
Well, good news is it fits. I've just had a little play to see how everything fits together. This throttle is extremely loose because it's actually not connected in, it's only PLA. But once we get the metal bars in there, and you can see that the rollers are stopping it from moving it laterally, so there should be absolutely no movement. And they are programmed to have about one millimeter gap between the two. They feel smooth and they feel good as well, but we'll see how that operates later on. It'll be very easy for me now to take those plastic PLA parts out, the stems, and then just mark them up against a bit of aluminium rod that I've already got. I should have already done that really prior to building this all like this, because it means I'm gonna have to separate it to get to those bars, but never mind. Got to finish off with the end cap now, and that's quite a big build, so I'm gonna shift this out of the way and move the end cap in. I've just picked up the right hand end cap and I've already pre-built the trim wheel. I have just noticed though, there's a serious flaw in my design already. I didn't see it on the right hand one, but I don't see why that's not flawed as well. And that's if you put it on the end and tap it, it pushes the bearing out in between. You see the bearings popped out on the inside? So that's absolutely no good and we need to find a way to secure that bearing to stop it from sliding out. We do not want that happening when we're using the device. I think for a temporary fix, super glue will be fixing it. However, that will need a complete redesign of the end cap here to hold it in. Whew. Which means another two day print for that part. Bugger. Anyway, let's build this up and uh, get it assembled and see if we've got any more flaws in the design. So I've forgotten to print the flaps gear, the flaps decal, and the trim decal that goes on the front here. Also the parking brake decal. This I think is now really good to, it's good to go on. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. And, wow, that's a bit of a monumental cock up because this last part here was a four day print and uh, I forgot to print the attaching mounting holes for the screws, which means there's no way to hold this on to the end. Well, that kind of sucks. And this is where we're at right now. So the unit is assembled. You can see that the, the trim wheels work. There's no trim wheel motor yet but I've got a few glaring mistakes that I need to fix to see how this design is gonna work before we go to prototyping. The first one being that I've forgotten to put the micro switches in for the home switches for the throttles here. So I need to replace them with this part here and a little mini micro switch goes on the end of the rail and that will push when it hits the end of the rail and let it know where the zero point is. So it always auto calibrates itself. The other thing, when I take this apart again, is I really want to fit the metal levers into position to make sure that all the play is removed uh, and the design works in that aspect. So bear with me while I strip this down rather quickly hopefully and make some adjustments. Now that I've got the cases separated, it breaks down really easy, just four screws in each section and they come apart nice and easy. You can see that I've already designed the micro switch, it's a little uh, ultra micro switch and that basically just gets pressed as the, as the controls come down. I haven't wired it up, which I need to do now, and I also need to put an extra screw in there to stop it from moving, which I seem to have only put one in.
And there we have it. It's big, it's really quite heavy, but it feels fantastic. The trim wheels are good. There's no trim wheel motor as it stands right now. The handles feel brilliant. There is no side movement that you can see. It's actually moving the whole unit. And the flaps lever, <laughs> that feels incredibly solid actually. Really pleased with that. Now there are some major flaws that I've got to go away and fix. This end cap here, there's no mounting screws for it to properly be affixed. So it basically it's just floating at the moment. I need to mount the trim wheel motor. That's still got to go. There's loads of little tweaks I need to make. Like I want to decrease the, the runner gap on some of the areas of the throttles to bring these closer together. Uh, but as you can see, everything's wired up. We're just gonna connect it to the interface boards, take it inside and see what happens. Let's do that next. It's been a couple of days since we last did the prototyping build and during editing of that film, I realized that some of the video footage was just duff. The cameras were too close and I wasn't front on. So basically my arms were getting in the way of the build and you'll probably have seen that as we went along. So what I've done is I've turned the workshop through 90 degrees, which allows me to have the cameras at the front, at the right, and at the left. Hopefully we get some better footage now and we can continue with the build. This is the prototyping section for the electrical section. They've got all our wires here that need to be connected up. We've got our prototyping board here. So what this is, is an Arduino with an Arduino shield fitted, one of the screw types. I've had lots of problems with these dew point connectors, the jumper leads. They're just rubbish. They're such poor quality. I mean, when you actually cut into these, there's only one single strand of copper, and most of the time they just break and they're useless, which is why I need to make my own connection leads using some real aircraft wire and try and avoid using these jumper leads. It really does affect the quality of the stepper motor. My plan is to wire the L298N stepper drivers solder these wires to each of the pins so they can never come undone and then we'll use the screw threads as the prototyping connector. When we actually come to the real thing, I want this all soldered so there are no bad connections. Even these screw terminals here are quite bad due to the poor quality of the screw terminals. I guess that just leaves me now to get some soldering done and get some work done on this board. Good morning guys, this is day four of the throttle build, uh, prototyping build, not the real build. And this abomination of wires and boards is the remnants of what I did yesterday. Now it started off all nice and tidy and we were using the, let's see if I can pull one of these off, there we go, the AL298 drivers. These turned out to be pretty useless. Dirt cheap, but useless. There's no current limiting capacity. So when you power these up to the stepper motors, these are rated at, uh, I believe, between two and four amps. They'll easily pull five amps through this. This is only capable of pulling two amps and it burns them straight out. If you've got all the stepper motors running at the same time, that's 15 amps that it can pull from your power supply and magic smoke starts to appear. They're out. Luckily, to my right, your left, you can see that I've got a CNC machine. I always keep spare stepper drivers for it. And these are the TB6600s. And I thought I'd give them a go. And the change in speed, quality, and the noise reduction was amazing. It still sounds like a CNC machine working, but it's a lot smoother, it's a lot quieter, and it's just better. The best of all is you can limit the current 
from half amp to three to four amps, basically. I've got it set to the lowest, so you can break out the, the stiction of the, uh, the stepper motor. However, if you want a really strong holding throttle, you just up the current, and these are capable of doing that by moving the dip switches. The NEMA 17s are 200 step motors. I've got 400 selected on these, which makes it just a little bit smoother because it takes into the half steps. I will put a video, a 30 second video of these in operation using these, so you do actually get to see this thing in operation. The throttles, I'm more than happy with them. They work perfectly, I'm not gonna touch them. What I learned yesterday was, when you've got a pot attached to the throttle, it doesn't matter if you move it in automatic, the pot takes that feedback and knows exactly where it is and tells, how, tells the stepper motor to drive it to that next position. So therefore, I don't need the home switches. They're completely redundant in the throttles. So they're gonna come out, just not needed. The next biggest problem was the trim, the trim wheel and its stepper motor. Now, these have got different color wires. And again, to get these to work with Mobiflight, I had to rearrange the pin assignments from the inputs. They're completely different to the 28 BYJ stepper motors that everyone's used to with Mobiflight. The L298 stepper motors, they are also wired up differently to the 28 BYJs. And then again, the NEMA, I think these are NEMA 17s, these are, are wired differently to them. These are only three and a half volt and I'm running them at 12 volt. They don't seem to have an issue with that because that's the voltage I have to put, the minimum voltage that these drivers can take. I may have to swap that out for a full size NEMA 17 just to keep it the same as all the rest of them. And of course that makes no difference, it just means it's gonna stick out an extra centimeter. The next thing I want to mention are the hall sensors. Number one was using the high quality pot and the number two was using the hall sensor and the hall sensor was a lot more responsive. So it was always the number two that was leading the way and always found its position the fastest. We're talking about a one millimeter difference and you'll see that in the video if I show it. And the final thing I want to mention today is the speed brake. The speed brake servo ran away and destroyed itself completely, destroyed the whole mechanism and uh, it was useless. I don't know why I just did the trim wheel there. If it happens to me, it's gonna to happen to everybody. That 30 kilogram servo has no power in destroying PLA. What I did get from it though was, the servo is probably not the best item to use, the best component to use. It's, it's too jittery, it, it doesn't follow nicely. When you move the throttles, the steppers move them nice and gently. There's not this jerking as you move it along. So I think what I'm gonna do there is fit the speed brake with a stepper motor. The other thing I need to do is change the hall sensor gearing ratio. So at the moment, it only turns, let me have a look. So there's zero. Oh, wow. It only turns 90 degrees. And that is not enough feedback for maybe flight to pick up on. It, the range is just too small and you don't get, that's probably what adds to the servo jerkiness. But regardless of that, I want to move it to a stepper. So it provides that lovely friction feel when you move it. So these are nice and this just flops because it's got nothing to restrict it. And this time I'll remember to put the detents in. This means a complete redesign of this left-hand side. I'm gonna remove the micro switches from the throttle. The flaps, the flaps works perfect, it just needs some minor adjustments. And you may have noticed, when I was testing it yesterday and programming it, because the flaps lever is actually quite hard to pull off, it's got a lot of spring pressure, I knocked off the top of the, uh, the detent lock. That may have just been just because I only used 10% infill it's not quite what I wanted to show you today, guys. I wanted to show you it fully working, but of course, that's not how prototyping goes. I'm gonna go away, redesign this where it needs to be redesigned. Some of the electrics work, some of the electrics don't, and we can improve on that. I'll catch you later, guys. Sim out.